In this video, we'll talk about microRNAs. So microRNAs are a class of non-coding RNAs that play important role in gene expression regulation. So obviously, eukaryotic gene expression regulation is there in the syllabus of IIT JAM. This particular video would be very useful to understand this concept. So microRNAs are very important for gene expression regulation. They basically are involved in development of organ, involved in cancer, involved in expression of large gene expression modules. So this is really important. Several level of gene expression can be modulated by these RNAs. But how does that work? Basically, majority of the micro RNAs are transcribed from DNA sequences. So there are specific genes that can give rise to precursors of the micro RNA. So here is a particular gene that would give rise to a pre micro RNA. It's a precursor of micro RNA, immature form of the micro RNA. Ye abhi mature nahi hua hai. So first they are formed in an immature form. Eventually they get processed to become a mature micro RNA. Then this pre micro RNA would assemble with specific proteins known as DGCR8 and Drosha. These names are a little bit important. Thoda sa yaad rakna. Then the pre micro RNA gets converted into uh, the subsequent form. But before that, the pre micro RNA has to be transported outside. It would be now combined with a complex known as Dicer and Argonaut proteins. Then eventually, with the Dicer and Argonaut complex proteins, it would be trimmed and it would be exactly looking like this particular structure. Then in this scenario, they would be binding to a mRNA of interest. And this particular mRNA has a complementary sequence for the microRNA. Many of the microRNA binding sites are present in 5' prime untranslated or 3' prime untranslated region. They would ultimately bind to the mRNA to form a risk complex or RNAi silencing complex. Eventually, the fate of our mRNA would be degradation. So they modulate the gene expression not at the DNA level. This is important to understand. They directly twinker with the mRNA level. So basically, let's see how mRNA could be produced. So basically, one gene can form one mRNA. Many mRNA can, many microRNAs can be produced from one gene. There could be presence of microRNA in a tandem fashion. Also, microRNA sometimes can be a part of the intron sequence. So microRNA could be present in many places. But where does microRNA bind? So most of the microRNA are found to be bound in the three prime untranslated region. Also in the five prime untranslated region, there are um, microRNAs that can bind. So basically, it would degrade the uh, gene, uh, gene product or basically it would degrade the micro uh, mRNA when it binds to the mRNA. So how, how does microRNA regulate gene expression? Two ways. First, degrading the mRNA. Second, translation in, in interference. Sometimes when the risk complex, which is a bulky complex, binds to the RNA, even if the RNA binds to the ribosome, gene exp the translation doesn't happen because it's kind of act acting like a roadblock. <clears throat> so it's important to note that there could be tissue specific expression of microRNA. That means a particular microRNA might be present in epithelial cell, might not be present in neuron or the vice versa. So basically in this case, let's say this particular microRNA is present in the neuron, but not in epithelial or fibroblast cells. So microRNA can determine cell fate choice. Imagine a cell fate choice is determined by two master regulators. So one of the way is basically, um, so basically the, non, the cell gains none of the fate because there is a mutual suppression, suppression between these two modules, gene expression modules. Now imagine there is a microRNA that inhibits or that degrades the component of master regulator two. In this situation, master regulator one product would dominate. So one gene expression module would dominate over other. The mutual repression would go away and only one module would be dominant. In this is one of the pro forma by which a particular fate can be chosen. In this example, it's basically the epithelial fate which is chosen over the neuronal fate. So it's, it turns out microRNA might have a diagnostic value as well. So the CSF 
or cerebrospinal fluid contains many microRNA and such as MIR204 and these microRNA regulates the neuronal stem cells. So basically these microRNA which is secreted in the cerebrospinal fluid regulate how the neurons are born. Isn't that amazing? Now microRNAs are implicated in context of cancer. Many of these microRNAs go haywire in the cancer cells. Question is how microRNA can be experimentally detected. Now there are many ways. One of the way is to particularly perform small RNA sequencing. There is another way which is quantitative real-time PCR which can detect microRNAs. Also fluorescence in situ hybridization can detect the in situ localization of the microRNA. Not only it would understand how many microRNA but also the localization, physical localization can be determined. Also there is a reporter assay that can understand gene expression regulation by microRNA. So in that case what happens is a particular artificial uh, mRNA is generated tagged with the 3 prime UTR sequence of our particular mRNA of interest. So in this case the GFP sequence is attached with that 3 prime UTR of that desired mRNA. Now obviously the GFP expression level tells us how to what extent the microRNA regulates this process. So obviously if the microRNA binds to the desired UTR the mRNA would be degraded and there would be less GFP related fluorescence. This is how fluorescence intensity is a measure of microRNA activity. So these are known as MIR sensors or uh, yeah the MIR reporters. So I hope this video was useful. Now let's watch the next video and please uh, practice the questions along with this video.